and I are back for another story time, but today I got to pick the book. Yeah. And today we're going to learn about Mary Blair, one of my favorite Disney artists. The name of this book is Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney Artist Extraordinaire. And we're reading this with permission from Simon & Schuster. So thank you, Simon & Schuster. Let's find out about Mary. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Under a wide blue sky, on a red dirt road, in a lemon yellow house, there lived a little girl named Mary. Other children collected marbles or dolls, but Mary collected colors <laughs> of every shade and every hue. One day, Mary's parents announced they were moving out west. As she waved goodbye to the yellow house, Mary tucked her friend Lemon in her pocket. Mary would miss the happy home, but she had new colors to collect. <laughs> Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, and sienna. When she arrived in California, she glimpsed the azure ocean and found groves of golden fruit dripping from viridian trees. Doesn't that look pretty? In the city, she discovered steel gray buildings and mauve tinted skies. Mary opened her sketchbook. She mixed her paints. She would save these shades for just the right time. When she was older, Mary went to art school. She met Lee. He showed her rosy pink and blushing red, and she kept those colors in her heart. Together, Mary and Lee painted rainbows, but it was the Great Depression and people were poor. No one was buying rainbows except one place. Where do we think that was? Hmm? Mary landed a job at Walt Disney Studios, one of the first women ever to be hired. Finally, a place for her colors to run and dance and play as they please her colors she was bringing with her. And here's Walt at the studio. <laughs> but on her first day of work, the men in charge didn't want to talk about Cerulean or Celadon or Cerise. They were only interested in black and white. Mary was told to follow the rules. She tried, but her colors were too vivid, too wild. When Mary turned in her work, all her ideas were rejected. Twinkling emerald skies, the men turned them blue. Magenta horses that could fly, the men made them brown and put them in a stable. Peach giraffes with tangerine spots. Her bosses just shook their heads. They didn't know what to make of her art. But Walt, the man who owned the company, did. He loved her colors so much, he asked Mary to join him on a trip to South America to meet some new ones. Doesn't that sound exciting? Ooh. Mary delighted in the colors of Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. She worked hard to capture the vibrant scenery. When it was time to go home, Mary's bags burst with fuchsia teal, aquamarine, indigo, lime green, and banana yellow. Aren't those beautiful? Look at those colors. After Mary returned to Disney, her concept art for the studio's upcoming films grew even more adventurous as she drew upon the eye-popping shades she observed in South America. Cinderella needed a teal pumpkin coach. The caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland could only be aquamarine, and the mermaids in Peter Pan simply had to be lime green. That sounds fun. This time, some of Mary's ideas were accepted, but most of her art was still considered too modern, 
too abstract and just not right. Mary's colors encouraged her to leave the men with their black lines and stripped wools. So she did. Mary quickly found new work designing advertisements, illustrating picture books for children, and creating sets for plays and television commercials. She enjoyed the freedom of these new jobs, but Mary missed Walt. Then one day, out of the blue, what do we think happened, Pencil? Her phone rang. It was Walt. Mary, I have a project for you. I need your wild and beautiful colors, his voice boomed. Walt explained his idea to build a magical ride that would teach people about cultures from around the world. The ride had to be full of color, which meant there was only one person for the job. Mary, you know about colors I've never even heard of before. Mary smiled and then she frowned as she remembered the rules and the lines and the men in charge who didn't understand her colors or her style of art. There was only one way to answer. Yes, said Mary, but her yes came with a condition. This time, Mary wanted to be the one in charge. Walt welcomed her aboard. Mary's paints seemed to sparkle when she hung up the phone. She had never been to places like China or Morocco or Kathmandu, but her colors had. Sitting down to work, she squeezed out dabs of paint, lemon yellow, aquamarine, and azure, mauve, taupe, and tangerine, russet, sienna, and steel gray, celadon, cerulean, cerise, magenta, teal, indigo, and emerald shined from her palette. And when she picked up her brush, the colors Mary had so carefully collected all her life took her on a trip around the globe. Look at all these amazing things and colors. When the work was done and the ride opened, people gasped in awe. It's a Small World was a sensation. Can you see this? Pretty, right? When it was Mary's turn to take the ride, she leaned back in the boat and she let her colors wash over her. It was a world of laughter, a world of smiles and color, color, color everywhere. This at last was Mary's world. I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope you have a beautiful and colorful day.